If you'd like to exchange your Magic Online cards for event tickets while logged in on Magic Online, you can do so by trading MTGO Academy's official bot, Academy Bybot. You can find it in the Magic Online trading area or add it to your buddy list. All right, we're back for round one. Um, we're playing against GD Cabello. Uh, so let's see how this goes. Do I feel confident about my deck? No, absolutely not. I think it looks uh, horrible, but this is pretty uh, good. Um, maybe we'll get to animate something dead. We'll keep this. Um, all right, so our opponent is on the play. If he's playing like a super fast deck, then we have to watch out, I guess. He's not spelling Cabello in the same way that the, you know, like those hunting games are. So him playing this means he either is doesn't have that much blue, or uh, he, he either doesn't have that much blue, or he doesn't have that much land in general. What's this going to be? Aquamiba. Okay. I actually think what I'm going to play here is the mountain, because... Well, it doesn't really matter. Um, it's bad that we drew that, because we need to find another... I, I don't know if we're going to find another uh, swamp in time. Um, I guess not showing him that we're playing red is probably good for now. This is definitely coming down, though. Us will pass. And if he madnesses something out... Yeah, we're not going to block that. He might uh, madness like a uh, root wall or something here. But he didn't. That's probably a good sign. Um, he does play a third land, so he can play a circular logic, notably. Um, and we did draw another black. That's good. So I'm going to try and cast the Mana War now. Circular logic demands there be cards in a graveyard, which there currently aren't. So let's just play this. He could play a monkey. He's not going to now. Okay, just a regular counterspell? I'm okay with that. Um, so I'm going to drop this. And then attack. And then next turn we can drop our whale. Which seems strong. Uh, note that animate dead can now become a mana war if we ever need to bounce anything. Alright. Uh, and also if he doesn't play another guy, we can... Predatory Night Stalker? That seems strong. And then animate dead that. What's he discarding? Arrogant Worm. Okay, so he's going to get a giant guy. Uh, that's kind of okay. It's not great. And uh, we're going to take some extra damage here. All right, and he keeps up circular logic. So it's possible that we get blown out by that. Um, I'm not sure if we should be playing around it. Um, that's interesting. Um, we drop this. Uh, and I think we just dropped the whale here. We could get circular logic here. Might happen. Is it gonna? Nope, didn't happen. All right, so let's pass the turn. Um, he thought about that long enough for me to think that he's worried about it. That was sort of a pause, like, ugh. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel about it. Um, and it's kind of neat that next turn we can drop this cougar, assuming our nightscape familiar is still in play. Um, we did pick up that Aether Mutation, so hopefully he doesn't have one of those. It's uncommon. He could have one. Um, doesn't look like he's playing that, though. Got a better Madness Enabler than this. Okay, so he's going to Deep Analysis, take three, draw two cards. That's okay. All right. Um... Fine. So he's up to four. He's going to drop a land now. There it is. All right. So then this turn, what happens? Does he attack? No. Okay, good. Uh, so this turn, we've got Chimeric Idol and Chartooth. I can drop the Chartooth. That seems right to me. Just because it's so big. Um, I could also make him sack a dude. While I can. But I think... Like, if I make him sack a dude here... I guess he has... 
he probably just pitches the Aquamoeba, then I lose this, and then I try to animate dead it later. Um, that's not so bad. I don't mind doing that. Maybe that's better than playing the Chartooth Cougar, because even though this is big, I'm, I don't think I'm going to get in there next turn with it. Um, so I'm going to drop this. I can't mountain cycle this anymore. I mean, I can, but I just can't find a mountain. What's happening here? He's not going to counter it unless he forces it. I guess he could, like, drop a root walla. I don't know. We're not really playing for, like, a living death model here. What is this? This might be Root Walla. Maybe doing exactly that. Yeah, that's exactly what he's doing. Okay. Well, that's okay. Um, so we got rid of the Root Walla, which would have been a surprise otherwise. <sighs> not ideal. Um, but I can set up to animate dead the Night Stalker and have him remove another guy. Yeah, we, we want him to use that ability. All right. So root walla, send that guy to hell. Um, and our board state space still looks okay. Um, so I, I, I'm willing to throw away the Night Stalker, which feels good. <laughs> um, and this Arrogant Worm, though big, is not end of the world. And him playing another land makes me feel a little bit better there, because it might mean he runs out of gas somewhat soon. I think he's just going to ship the turn here. He actually lost the Aquamoeb over the root walla. That's interesting. Um, I am going to block here. This forces him to discard the remaining two cards in his hand. To kill him. And then I can bring him back. What's happening? Is this another arrogant worm? That would be kind of bad. That's a gush. Okay. That's kind of bad for me, because it means he can just pitch those useless islands, I guess. Okay, there's one. Maybe he doesn't know what to discard. Um, he's going to cycle that. He wants to see if he wants to discard something else. And then he's discarding a Madness card. Got another Root Walla? What a bummer. Um, okay, well that's not very exciting. Because uh, it just means now when the Predatory Night Stalker comes back, it's going to kill a Root Walla. Maybe this was greedy. So he seemed extra confident here. He's going to keep his guy alive. Um, he didn't discard anything else that we really want to animate dead. Yuck. That's a lot of mana. <laughs> okay. Um, neat. So we can have this guy fly overhead, but that seems, like, super bad. It seems like he's stalling up the ground sufficiently right now. Um, this thing can murder Rafelos, which is kind of cool, but I don't really care that much about that. Like, the question is, do I play the Chartooth Cougar right now? Because that guy's pretty big. Um... Or do I animate dead right now? That doesn't seem that excellent. He's got an island in his hand, too. I could also play, like, Chimeric Idol and animate dead. Let's just go ahead and play the Cougar here. Um, we also can cast this and deal five to something. I'll wait on that. Um, I think he would have countered the Cougar had he had the chance. All right. I love this guy. Killer Whale. I mean, that's not how big Killer Whales are in real life, unless that's just a really small thopter. Which is possible. Um, so, he can make, like, eight mana worth of stuff. That's really important for the Root Wallas, but not for much else. And he played his other island, which means these are two unknowns in his hand. I think he's just going to pass here. Yeah, he did. Um, so that's good. Um, if I attack with this, I think it probably runs into two root walls, and it can only kill one of them. 
Um, I could also send this guy over. That's not very exciting. I mean, it starts the clock, but I kind of want to keep this guy back still. Um, I could also animate dead with the Night Stalker, killing a Root Wall, presumably, and then that opens up the option to attack with this a little bit better. I guess. But it just doesn't make it that strong. Um, and playing this land is probably good right now. Okay, so we'll play the land. Um, I think we can play the idle. Like, what does attacking with this guy do? Can deal five. Can regenerate here. That's good. Like, eliminating one of the root walls just doesn't seem that strong. But I guess it's not horrible. Um, I don't want to take any of his guys. Like, this might just be super greedy here and not worth it. Um, but I'm going to animate dead here. This is not a game-changing play. It just eliminates one of his dudes. He's got only two cards in hand. Like, I kind of want to exhaust his hand, but I don't want to lose a cougar and trade it for, like, no relevant guys. Like, if he blocks with the Arrogant Worm, is that good for me? I think it is. I think it's okay. Um, what if he blocks with, like, Rafelos and a Root Walla? Then I kill both, and that's okay, right? What if he blocks with Mongrel? Yeah, this trades for something. I guess, like, you can block with Root Walla and Mongrel, and then it trades for one of those. Um, and a card in his hand. So I kind of like that. Could have also attacked with um, Killer Whale, which maybe would have been worth doing in the same turn. All right, so he has um, no blockers, right? No, we don't know that yet. No, I just effed up. Um, I forgot how this worked, and then the result was that I didn't do as much damage as I should have done. Um, I could have put him at 11 there. Which is actually significant because of the Caravax Torch. Um, but I think we can take this game. So we played another land. That seems silly to me with a Mongrel. I mean, he could have another Gush, which causes him to want to play another land, another island. Okay, there's a Man of War. What's that going to target? Yeah, okay. Makes sense. See what comes in. Um, so like the question is, do I want to block the Root Walla here? I could also double block the Arrogant Worm. Or I can set up to try and kill him on my turn. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I can deal six with a familiar out. Um, do I want to do six with a familiar out? Let's do that. All right. I think he forgot this was here. And I'm going to double block the Arrogant Worm. That's fine. And he's going to kill the Chimeric Idol. Like, I'm just not sure that was worth it, because maybe I'm just trying to kill him with a Caravex Torch, so maybe I just wanted to take damage and then eat all his dudes. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we're at 13. We eliminated the Arrogant Worm, which feels pretty good. What's he casting now? He's only got one more card in his hand, so... Blasted Arm. That's strong, actually. Um, so, uh, maybe, like, the thing I should have been doing is going for a Whale Kill earlier. We want to keep enough back to regenerate 
um, our uh, guy at this point. And I don't think we're going to need to make our killer whale fly. So let's play this, drop this, and I think we can comfortably pass the turn. Yes. All right. So it is going to turn out that uh, not dealing that extra point of damage because forgetting how combat works um, could cost me. Yeah. We're going to block here. And we're just going to put a fancy regen shield on this guy. All right. That worked fine. No problems. None, None at all. Um, so that was just a boring turn. Uh, but that's good for us here. I don't know if we want to cast that yet. So if he goes to 9, what happens? Um, and he takes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 isn't quite good enough. Um, if we attack with everybody... Like, I could attack with the cougar, too, and the whale. And the whale, he has to... Um, just so you know, my wife is going to start cracking some popcorn. It adds... It adds to the stress, which is good. Um, it's a special effect. It's a special effect, she claims. Uh, and it is, kind of, if you don't think about it too hard. Uh, we're going to attack with these guys. Let's see what happens with this cougar. Um, he's got one card in hand, so like he can block with Mongrel and Rootwalla and Pump. Um, he could block with her fellows. I think like the cougar trades for two guys. If he takes it, he just loses. I'm adding a special effect for your viewers. Adding a special effect. Thank you. Cool. Alright, uh, yeah, we will organize their damage that way. And that's fine. Let's trade in that particular fashion. Um, let's put two on each. Okay. Uh, that's fine. Uh, he goes to nine. Uh, we want to keep Regenerate up, and I am going to keep this Caravex Torch and just drop this guy so that, um, we have another blocker. And that sucks <laughs> that we have to pitch that, because that definitely would have been a game win. Um... Yeah, we gotta drop it. Wow. How lame. Okay, so I sense a little bit of desperation on his part here. I don't think that I could die with uh, what he's got going on. Um, my wife is distracting me. I think she's been drinking. I know she's been drinking. Uh, we'll take damage from these other guys, and I'll regenerate here. Uh, it, if it sounds like cannon fire, that's just because of the cannon fire. Could we lose? You're on camera, remember? I didn't do anything. I know. I'm just just letting you know. I'm just reminding you. All I, I, I just come in to use the kitchen. It's not my fault that you set up stuff here. Oh, I know. Um, alright, so, uh, he passes the turn. He could have, uh, the monkey. The monkey. Uh, that called arrow light comes into play tap. That sucks. So, like, the question is, do I get in with everything? It takes six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I would, I would die on the crackback if, I mean, he could have Tangle. Tangle would be something that kills me if I attack with everything. Um, he could also have a counter spell that costs four mana, but he can do that for Caravax Torch. Um, there was at least another counterspell going around, so there's that. I think the way to go here is to attack three, four, five, six, seven. Um, so we can hit him for six. Why don't I attack with the Owl Familiar and the Predatory whatever? And then let's try to torch him out for exact. Um, actually that won't be exact. That'll be... Well, what happens What happens if he's got, um, Simeon Grunts? Simeon Grunts would be a problem, but I just don't want to die to... Simeon I'll just attack with this and make it fly if he plays a Simeon Grunts. That's the plan. All 
All right. Um, I mean, maybe he made a desperation move, and so maybe he's got, like, a power sink here. Um, yes, we want to do one. Want to hit him for six. Oh, and he just have sixed. So we, we won. All right. Let's go to game two. Um, You're going to win. Well, hopefully. At some point. At some point. Um, Owl Familiar did not appear to be super strong, but blocking his guys seems okay. He's got, like, Wild Mongrel, which is good. I actually think Power Sync is good, but it's mainly going to be good on the play. Um, so I'll wait on that. Um, Skywing Aven, probably not very strong, especially when he's got this, but I think I'm willing to play one of them. Um, we could, like, board in a forest and a Aether Mutation or a Plains and a Noble Templar and a Death Grasp. Seems wrong. He's got, like, Counterspell and some other things. <gasps> oh, there we go. Had, like, a half burp. Um, this seems okay. I mean, three toughness is the key, that he's got so many basking root walls and stuff that you want guys to have three or four toughness. Um, Kezardrick seems better than originally anticipated, so let's dump that in and submit. I'm keeping the mana the same. I'm just going to prioritize black a little bit more, because Kezardrick seems good. Like a deck that just had a lot of Kezardricks... Strixes, Strixes would probably be better than the deck that I have, unfortunately. Um, so it looks like he's thinking maybe he wants to go on the draw. Uh, we were on the draw last game, so that's good. Um, we pulled it out anyway. Um, is this hand good? It's not excellent, but we're on the draw. I'm going to keep this, and we're going to uh, probably play the Lonely Sandbar. The only way I wouldn't is if I drew another island. If I did draw another island, I would cycle it. This Famine, it's going to be a while before we can cast that. Um, same with the Chain Lightning, but he didn't start with anything. I guess he's thinking. Did he start drafting again? Maybe his name is Gary... Doobie. Cabello. Gary Donald. Okay, um, we're going to drop the sandbar. Uh, that does send him some information. Let's him know that we want to keep another island in play. In our hand, rather. Uh, Brainstorm. That's not the best end of turn play, so I don't really care. Uh, he draws three cards, puts two back, and then draws one of them. So he basically exchanges a Brainstorm and another card for another one. Like, it's no Ancestral Recall. Um, okay. That's fine. Let's draw a mountain. That's not a mountain. Um, so I would think that we draw at least one land at some point. Uh, and hopefully it happens here, because I would really love to play... Uh, oh, God. Rootwalla? Really? Okay. Fine. Um, I'd really love to play a Man of War two turns in a row. That would be, that would be good. So he wouldn't do this right now unless he was also planning on attacking with that guy uh, and pumping him. Because otherwise you would just wait and use the ability to pump. It's the same thing. So I'm going to go to 15 here. Yep. Okay. And now we really want to see land. If we don't, we're in... Oh, God. All right. So what do we want to discard? Something that we uh, want to animate dead, I guess. Um, yeah, he gets to cycle, big man. Um, I'm going to pitch... Whoa! I'm going to pitch the uh, killer whale, because I could feasibly see wanting to animate dead that. Um, that's no good. It's going to be hard for us to uh, come back in this format and in this game from what has just transpired. Especially if he plays, like, another Mongrel or an Aquamoeba or something. This is, like, taking me back to 2001. I mean, I'm the one who decided that this was a 16-land deck. So, um... If we don't see another one here, though, that's just stupid. Well, we did, kind of. So, hopefully he doesn't have counter spell up, because I think that means we just lose. Um... I'm going to kill this, because I can kill it for sure. Nice. Okay, so we aren't dead yet, but now if, like, an Arrogant Worm comes into play, we're in trouble. 
And we need to start crawling our way back with Man of Wars. Man of War? Yeah, Man of War. Man of War. All right, um, so attack, uh, and please don't do anything with the remaining four cards in your hand. Please just have lands. Okay, so far so good. Probably Blastoderm coming. Whoa, didn't see that coming. Maybe there's just like ether mutations. Um, all right, so try to cast this and hope it resolves. Nope, not today. All right, now is this Arrogant Worm? Maybe? Gosh, gross. Um, he's got a lot of tools then. Um, and this famine is getting worse and worse, for sure. Um, so he can just kill us this turn. We get to see his hand at least, basically. All right, let's see. Um, I don't even know what he's discarding. Just land, I guess. Wow. And a Tusker, which he could have just cycled, but that's fine. We lose. All right. Um, so that's what happens when you lose to Wild Mongrel. Um, we're on the play now, which means I think I want to bring Power Sink in. Uh, it's not extraordinary against him, but... <sighs> that game was sad. I might want to bring in another land. When I'm on the play... Like, maybe this Owl Familiar becomes less valuable. And... I don't know. Got a lot of tools. Like, I just need to hit three land, though. All right. Uh, like, this Animate Dead, not super exciting, I guess. Especially when I cut out another Owl Familiar. Um, so let's bring in another... Uh, how about another Black... Uh, so I can definitely hit, like, turn four Kezerdrix. All right. Uh, let's roll with that. So now I'll probably be, like, flooded. Wait and see. No. Uh, we just don't have any land anyway. Um, I mean, if I find another one, we find a mountain. But I don't think I can risk that. We're going to mull. This is better. We got Living Death, and everything else sucks, but that's okay. Um, this is super slow. Um, and he did not mulligan, as uh, we might have expected. I am just going to drop the sandbar. Um, so let's just uh, drop it and pass. That's because like we could draw Chainer's Edict or something and really want to use it. Um, but it looks like he's going to brainstorm instead, or obsessive search or something. That's okay. Um, lame. Uh, I will probably... Uh, mountain cycle that almost assuredly uh, brainstorm that's fine EOT brainstorm I mean this guy's beating me so take my advice with a grain of salt um, but uh, EOT brainstorm is usually not very good most of the time unless you're planning on cracking a fetch land or you're really in a desperate place uh, that screams to me counterspell uh, which is fine, or he just can't find uh, forests, and he kept a brainstorm blue hand, hoping that he would be able to brainstorm into a forest, uh, which he could not. Um, that's fine, I guess. <laughs> uh, we're setting up, actually, for a funny living death play. Um, so, I may actually want to mountain cycle this before living deathing, which is hilarious. We just don't want him to be able to counter it. There's another brainstorm. Um, okay. So I guess he's really hunting for forests, would be my guess. Um, if he can't find him, that's, that's cool. It's cool to me. Okay, so... He's dug pretty deep, but he just drew a card with this lonely sandbar that he already had in his hand. Like, the question is, do I want to uh, drop this right now? So if I do that, then I can deep analysis on my turn. I'm not going to do that. It could be right, but I'm not going to do it. 
just hard for me to tell. Um, but I do think I'll eat a counter spell when I deep analysis here. And that's fine. Um, all right. So let's choose myself. Let's see. Do we get to draw our two cards? Um, that screamed to me he has a counter spell. We're not going to be able to cycle this anytime soon, but, um, hmm. If he taps out of blue this turn, I might living death, especially if he plays another guy. Well, if he doesn't play another guy, I probably won't do any of that. What might be okay is if I play Killer Whale and it either eats a counterspell or doesn't. Um, so what's he doing? Nothing? Okay. Um, maybe his hand just super sucks. That's also totally possible. Um, so let's drop Killer Whale. If this gets countered, that's okay. And it does, so we were correct reading the counter spell there. What's this going to be, though? Cycle. Okay, so we just wanted to cycle and find something else. So this is the turn where we want him to tap out of his blue. And play creatures, too. Uh, Wild Mongrel is not very good to see, though, because with Living Death, he can, like, pitch the remaining creatures in his hand into the hole. Smokestack! Okay. Um, that's super scary. Um, wow. I don't know quite what to do about that, but if we're going to start sacrificing permanence, like, that's extra bad. Um, so I can set up for a better living death by bouncing... Bouncing is Rootwalla. I kind of, I kind of like this. Um, this is interesting. I can play this. Bounce Rootwalla. And now I will mountain cycle this. Sacrifice the, the mana war. Um, and then living death. And hope he doesn't have a counter spell. But he can't just, like, sit back. Do absolutely nothing, I don't think. Let's find out. That could have been an error there. I just wanted to get an extra dude in play, which might be extra greedy. I hope he plays another dude that's not a wild mongrel. Blasted arm, hopefully? Eh, that's not very good for me. All right. Um, so now we're going to sacrifice permanent. It's going to be Man of War. And <gasps> I forgot to cycle the Chartooth Cougar. No. Okay. Um, so I just made a the worst of all boo-boos possible. Because now I don't get nearly as many guys back. And Man of War has to come back to my hand, which sucks. Um... That's going to change the game. Why am I so bad, everybody? Um, okay, so we have to Living Death now, even though it's significantly less powerful than I would have liked. And then, like, the Man War bounces itself, which super sucks. Really? Okay, fine. Um, so it has to, yeah, we'll just have it bounce itself. Okay. Um, so he's probably going to want to keep up the sacrifice charade. And I think we can't afford to... Having a second Chartooth Cougar up would be, like, total difference here. Um, he's got to play something. Especially if he's yeah, he's playing a land. 
So there's an aqua amoeba. Who cares about that when it's by itself? What is this? No! You serious? Oh my god. I'm gonna lose because I forgot to mountain cycle this. No! Ah, oh, smokestack. That's awful. Okay, so now we have to sacrifice two permanents. And I think it has to be this and probably... Uh, probably a swamp. We're gonna, like, lose everything here. Um... All right, let's think about this. Um, probably has to be the cougar. I don't see how we would make this happen any other way, because, like, we could bounce the aqua amoeba, and he can just recast that. Then I feel like I'm going all in on some horrible plan. Um... And then we have to sacrifice three permanents. I, I hate playing against cards like this. I really don't want to lose this game because I feel like I have this match. Like, we could play the Serendib Afrit here. Um, if we play Serendib, he loses two. He sacks two lands. And we have to sack three things. Yeah, he just takes four. So this thing doesn't do anything anymore. Like, we have to lose this. And probably, like, this swamp. We really want to see a land here. Okay, we do, fortunately. Um, but it's not very exciting at this point, because maybe I shouldn't have played that, and I should have just, like, gone for the horrifying long game. Hmm. It's like, sacrificing three permanents is super bad. He sacrifices a total of five of these. That's too many. Um, yeah, this is bad. Like, Mana War is pretty good to sacrifice, all things considered. But this isn't very good. Um, okay. We don't have another mountain to even find. All right. So if he he definitely has to lose three permanents on his next turn. He keeps hitting land drops. So if he attacks with this, I think I take it. Unless okay. All right. Um, if I block, I lose three. He then will definitely lose this the following turn. Um, one of them would be a swamp. And then two islands, I think. And so then he loses three, including his own smokestack, probably. If I don't, then I lose three. I can play Serendib. So I, I think I have to... He plays the Aqua Amoeba. So I need him to have to play the Aqua Amoeba. Right? Yeah, l let's sack the Mana War here. I'm not sure that that's right. Let's just play the Serendib at least. Having this extra card would have made all the difference, which is really sad for me. Um, okay, so he's got seven out, or eight permanents total. Um, we lose three here. All right, draw a card. Uh, the question is, do we play that? We definitely play this, I think. 
And then if he goes up to four things, he loses three, and the next turn he loses four. What if he keeps it at three? Um, yeah, let's not play another land. Let's roll with this. Great. Is this like Rootwalla? Yeah. So that's another permanent for him. He can just pitch. Alright, um, so he loses three, probably puts up four, because then I clear my board. And then he clears the smokestacks, then I start the game over and all of his guys are on the board. And so I lose, I think. What a bummer. I had the plan, and then I just didn't implement. Wow, another madness guy? His deck is so good. Alright. Hmm. All right, so he kept that. So he has to sacrifice three permanents on his next turn. Okay, because I don't want to just go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this arrogant worm. That would be bad. Um, none of these cards in my hand do anything. It's going to draw two more cards. Okay. Um, interesting. So I have to sack all but one permanent. And I think that has to be... Let's see. Do I sacrifice the Efreet? If I do that, he sacrifice. I need the blocker. It's like I need him to... Yeah, I need to toss these lands away. And then we need to come back from this somehow. Um, I guess that's not the worst way in the world to do it. So he sacks three probably including the smokestack, and then he has all of his guys still. Um, and I think we want to play the land, because I assume he loses the smokestack this turn. If he doesn't sack the smokestack, I'd probably just start the game over. Okay, but he is sacking it, so he's making the right play. He's keeping lands out. Okay, so that seems smart to me. Um, we need to find a way immediately to deal with the Arrogant Worm, which is going to be very hard, because like a lot of the cards in our hand just are terrible at this point. Um... Oh, really? Man, brutal. All right, so this is the beginning of the end for sure. All right. Um, let's see. Now that the Serendip of Freed is back in our hand, <laughs> we don't have a lot of... Uh, uh, yeah, I think that's going to be it. Um, so let's dump this in the turd pile, and we take dead. Um, so could I have won had I had this thing in play? Probably. I think it would have changed the, uh, the math considerably. I would have been able to, uh, keep my, uh, creatures around and just attack him. Uh, I have nothing I can find here, I don't think. Um, no, I can't. Uh, because even if I find animate dead and a land all at the same time, yeah. Um, so thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time.